not working. Here we go. Are we recording? I think we're recording. Hey, everybody, it's KJ from uh, Fort Life Coaching and also Beyond My Expectations. And I'm here today with one of my high school classmates, the Mark Knapp, also known as the Napper. So Mark and I went to Persephone High and we actually met um well let me tell you let me let me tell you a little bit about mark before i tell you how we met because how we met is really or or how we uh stayed in contact during high school is really cool so um basically a little bit about mark mark went to parsippany high mark was a guard at parsippany high he was then recruited by susquehanna university um and went there as a guard he played guard his freshman year and sophomore year at susquehanna high school and um, after after playing there, he graduated from Susquehanna and he ventured into coaching. Um, as a coach, Mark has done phenomenal things. He's received several awards. And I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the great things that Mark has done. Um, Mark has actually he has um, he coached at our high school at our alma mater, Persephone High School. And during his tenure there in 1999. He, um, his boys team made the uh, Hall of Fame. He was also, he was the coach of the head coach and the assistant coach for the boys for five years. He was the head coach for the girls basketball team for eight years at Persephone High. Um, he has also, uh, I'm going to read his list. He's been a part of two, two conference championship teams. He's uh, one of, one of Morris County championship teams, two state sectional championships, one overall group New Jersey State Championship team, one tournament of champions appearance. He is currently the coach at Gil, I'm sorry, Gil St. Bernard. Um, this in the first of his uh, two seasons, he actually, his team actually posted their best divisional record um, and they are the top 20 in the state. I looked recently and you guys went one week from top 16 to now top 15, am I correct? We, we were- uh... You ready for the next game? We were last ranked number 13. Number, I'm sorry, number 13. I saw 15, I'm sorry. Yes. So um, so now you're number 13. Correct. Um, he has coached, um, he's been a AAU, uh, AAU director and manager of Hoop Heaven and Bridgewater for over 30 years, am I correct? Uh, I've been manager at Hoop Heaven for over 15 years. Over 15 years, I'm sorry, yes. for over 15 years. Um, so, but he's been coaching for over 30 years. Am I correct? Uh, right around 30 years. That's correct. Right around 30. Oh my God, Mark. You are older than me though, right? <laughs> you are, I, was, I, was, I was younger. You were mentoring me. <laughs> um, uh, right out of college, I started Mark, coaching. Much better, much better. And you graduated from college when you were like 13. Am I correct? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yes, that, that's so correct. Mark, that was a genius. Yes, yes, yes. I look. We, I saw it. I saw it. I was the one that was calling it between me and Coach Tierney. Yeah. So um, Mark has won Morris County Star Ledger Coach of the Year, and um, he is also coach. Uh, he's coach high school. He's coach college. He's coach uh, professional athletes such as Sterling Gibbs and Nate Kier Louis. So I wanted to tell you a little bit, Mark. Did I get it right, or did I miss something important? No, you you got everything right. I oh, appreciate. I it. forgot. Nope, I forgot that you were selected to coach the North South All Star Basketball Game, and you were the head coach for the girls team in New Jersey. Am I correct? Yes, for the North team. Yep. For the North team. Okay, right. great. Yep. So let me tell you how I met Mark. So when I was at Persephone High, so now Persephone High used to play East Orange, South Orange, and uh, Morristown High School, and Persephone High had very few African Americans. Actually, there were like. I think the most I ever counted was 16 out of 1,700 students um, at the school. And so Coach Tierney, the coach of the basketball team, um, said to me, he said, you want to play, do you want to be a statistician? And I said, yeah, I would love to be a statistician. He said, you just want to go meet the brothers. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, well, yeah, you know, that, if, that's, if that's a possibility, I would like to meet the brothers at Nova School. So, um, so I was a basketball <laughs> statistician and Mark was one of our star players at um, Persephone High. And I just remember, Mark, I don't know if you remember this, but on the bus, like Coach Tierney, he would like, when we would leave or when the game would be over, if you guys would win, it was great. But if you guys lost, we had to be quiet on the bus, right? That That is true. And he would say, Kelly, or he, I can't remember if you called me Kelly or Joe, say, Jones, stop talking <laughs> when we lost the game. And I was like, but coach, we're going to play again. We got another game. He's like, I said, stop talking. 
That's... Oh, he used to get he used to get mad at me on the bus rides because I would keep talking. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I do remember that. I remember that. <laughs> and then well. I was sitting in the and I was sitting in the front and I would try to talk to people in the back of the bus. <laughs> <laughs> And you, you, and you won most talkative, right? Yeah, well, you know, had to win something, right? <laughs> I heard they said I was talking to somebody who was on the um counting committee and they said <laughs> they said that I won and the second place person was I think Stacy Dirsch and she got six votes. <laughs> oh, that means I'm like four hundred kids. I probably got like, you know, 300 or 350 and she got six votes. So, so I guess I did win most talkative, something like that. <laughs> so That's Mark, so let me ask you something. You yeah. you were so, so much heart and so much passion in basketball, in school. I just remember on the court, you giving it 150% and you being so focused. Tell me about your love of basketball. Where did it start? How did it grow? You know, tell me a little bit about you and basketball. Well, I, I played basketball since since three years old. Holy so jeez. Yeah, I had a passion. My dad was, you know, a basketball player when he was younger, and he got me involved right away. And, you know, being obviously, I'm not the tallest guy. I'm five foot eight. So I had to work harder than anyone. And that's, you know, to overcome, you know, the height. And, I put in hours and hours every day. My dad would drop me off at the park. I would play five hours. He would pick me up. He would drop me off five o'clock, pick me up at 10 o'clock. And he knew the passion I had and the love for I had for the game right away. And that, that was a bond that we had together as well. Yeah, your passion, your heart was dynamic. I was reading that you played in Newark Hoops. Like you would go to, well, actually, let me see if I can show you something. Mark, yeah. look at what I found. Uh-oh. <laughs> what? Do you recognize anyone on this page? Wait, I, I didn't see. Let me. Right there? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> yeah, I saw where you room. played. Um, Huh? So, yeah, so I played. Yeah, that's, that's me. So that's scary. <laughs> you never that's know. So you never know what people have, I, right? Oh, yeah. oh! I got something else to pull out of this whole oh, thing right no. here. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I was afraid of. <laughs> I couldn't tell you everything. So, uh, I played, so you two. Go ahead. You said you go ahead. I thought, so I did play in. Um, I played in Newark and Jersey City basically every day from eighth grade until college. I had um. A guy that took me under his wing, his name was Joe Wilson, and he brought me wherever the best players were to play, and this was every night, and I got my butt kicked for the first couple of years, and then all of a sudden, I became a lot better, and it was against the best co competition. That was the only way for me to improve, and it, it helped me so much, and I, to this day, I still speak to um, His name is Joe Wilson, and I got to coach his son, Ian Wilson, when he played at Parsippany under our state championship team. And now his son works for me as a coach at Hoop Heaven Bridgewater. So it's, you know, it's it's an unbelievable bond. I was speaking to my um to my cousin Cleo. I don't know if you ever played Cleo Hill. Yeah, I I know of him, but I didn't play him. And he was telling me about the importance of he's a coach and he was telling me about the importance of playing in different environments so that you don't get, you know, so that you don't become rote and routine and that you're you're more agile your thinking your processing is more agile in the game do you know what i mean yes definitely definitely but yeah, going to different areas and playing against the best people uh, that's how you get better do you encourage your students do you encourage your athletes to do that as well of course that i want them to go in um you know all different scenarios different places uh where there's you know whether there's uh, more athletic people, whether there's there's people that are playing a more you know um, fundamental game, just playing against all different types of players, that's going to help you get better. But you always want to go where the best players play. That's the only way to get better. Yeah, I was reading that you're very big on fundamentals. That's one of the things that you uh, that you promote yeah, for your athletes is fundamentals. Yeah. 
Yeah, that, that's big for them to, um, you know, to play at the next level. They got to be fundamentally sound. So with this passion and with this drive, did you ever think of being the next Muggsy Bowles or <laughs> Nate Robinson or Spud Webb? I mean, were those ever, did you ever look at them as heroes? I mean, Muggsy Bowles, I think, is five foot three. He's five foot three, and he, I did. He was one of my favorite players. And of course, every kid's dream is to play in the NBA, but I was realistic. I'm, you know, I'm five eight, not super athletic. And I understood where, you know, I could play in college, but it would probably stop there. But my favorite player is Magic Johnson, who happens to be six eight. Uh, and he was my favorite player just for his passion of how he loved to play and how he loved to pass the basketball. And that's what I did best as a player. And he just got all his teammates involved. He, he was my idol growing up. Uh, playing was Magic Johnson. Okay, so I was going to say the corny girl thing, right? <laughs> the thing that I remember about Magic Johnson was his smile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, yep. I think that, his smile. Was yeah, I think that God, if you love what you're doing, you know. Yeah. So when I was older, uh, in my 30s, I got to meet Magic Johnson, where. We won his the Magic Johnson three on three tournament. My team won it. So we got to hang out with him the night before the tournament and all day. And he I was I was such an awe. And how you see him on TV, that's how he is in person. He was the greatest guy. And to this day, I'm, I'm so thankful that I got to meet my idol. Tell me, tell me the nugget you took from that conversation or that event or that weekend. It was. I took everything in. It was, uh, it meant so much to me because I had posters of him in my wall growing up. And uh, it was someone that I try to emulate as much as possible as far as playing. And I knew what a good guy he was from watching him on interviews and then to see him in person to be that actual person that you did see on TV was amazing. He was the greatest guy. He wrote me a nice little note that I still have to this day. And uh you know, I have his jersey autographed, and it was, uh, you know, it was unbelievable. Unbelievable the time and the consideration that he would take for, you know, people, just people in general. Because sometimes, you know, people get to that next level, and they forget yeah. people who help them to get to where they are today. If yeah. you were to say that your people, your, your, your players from Persephone, high school boys, high school girls, et cetera. If you were to say there was something that you wanted to leave with them, right? Um, some nugget that you would like to impart on them and, and you would love to see that seed grow. Yeah. What is that nugget that you would say that, that you would love to have seen, love to see that you have given your, um, your former athletes? You, you know what it is? The, the most important thing, it would be their work ethic. And to see them succeed, it has nothing to do with basketball. I want to see them succeed college and outside of college. That's the most important thing. So, you know, I'm pretty demanding and I make sure that they have a good work ethic because I know they're going to be successful people, you know, when they're, uh, when they, when they're adults. And now I get to have, you know, I still keep in touch with players that I've coached almost 30 years ago from Parsippany. I coached at Mendham. Uh, it's people, you know, I'm still in touch with. I've been to some, some of my former players' weddings. I have my former players, currently my assistant coach, that uh, his name is Nate Suresh. I coached him at Parsippany High School, and we had a great bond yeah. as coach player there, and now is my assistant, and we have the same philosophies, and to see him grow as an adult now, and he just had a baby, and I know he's going to be a great father. It just it that's what coaching is about, and that's probably my favorite part. That my former player is my assistant coach now. Wow, that's a big transition from what I read in Parsippany High School's yearbook about what you wanted to do and what you like to impart upon other people, or the or the seeds or nuggets you like to leave. And for, according to Parsippany High School, your yearbook it says, "What is your ambition?" to own a chain of friendlies. <laughs> Do you remember that? Oh, you want to well, stop well, well, there's a reason for that. <laughs> uh, we, 
you know, a group of friends. We we went to friendlies every night. That was our big social outings, I guess. And, oh yeah. And now um, <laughs> that's pretty funny. Yeah, I got a little more ambitious after I went to college. <laughs> that's very funny. <laughs> and and you went at, at Susquehanna. You got more ambitious. Yeah, I, I became a little more goal oriented. I I reached for higher things than you know. Go, you know, going to friendlies. I, oh. I was a finance major in college and, uh, you know, <laughs> wait, going to friendlies right was pretty college. high up there. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> wait, I lost it. Uh, right, right out of college, no, 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 I got no, asked no. to coach the freshman team at Parsippany High School. So, get out. Luckily, I no way. I turned, that's how I turned into coaching. What was that? Who, who was at Parsippany High? Who, who was there when they asked you? come coach when i it was uh i don't know if you remember bob conway was the head coach and mr grapaldi was the uh athletic director oh my god i used to love mr grapaldi yeah he was a good guy and uh so 1989 i got to coach the freshman team at parsippany high school i was basically a couple years older than my players and um but we we had a good bond i wow. we had a good team right off the bat my first year I remember we were 18 and four, and uh, that's when I kind of knew coaching was my thing. And I keep in touch with a lot of those. What did you, what did you see? I mean, what, 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 what did you, it, it was my, what passion. did you see or what was that moment? Like, it, it was just like, uh, I just felt, cause usually I'm a quiet guy. And then as soon as I coach, I become a lot louder and um, I'm more confident when it comes to uh, coaching. And I, I felt like I can make a difference with all these kids and it had nothing to do with basketball. It's what I could do with them outside of basketball. So tell, tell me, can you give an example of a time when something happened you said, oh, this is it, this, like, this is working. Was there like, a, like a, a miracle moment or like a magical moment when you said, oh, this is it? Well, I just thought, you know what, it, when after the season's over and, you know, you have a banquet and you talk about your players and then the players come up, usually the captains come up and they speak about the coach. And my first year, uh, mm -hmm. the kids, and they were, they were only freshmen, they were scared to, you know, talk on the uh, microphone, obviously, and they gave, uh, you know, they said things about me that, I didn't realize myself how much I meant to them, uh, both on and off the court. And that's when I kind of knew like this, this is for me, like I can really make a difference. So that, that would be it. I think just hearing them talk about me, how much I meant to them. And, you know, they said, I never had a coach like this before and things like that. And that really kind of, that stuck to me. And I knew this was for me. Isn't it amazing working with kids, the, the transparency and the honesty? Um, I do a little exercise with my kids whenever, um, like, let's say somebody's being mean towards somebody else. What I'll do is I'll take, let's say there's 30 kids in the class. Everybody takes a sheet of paper and they write their name on the top and they mm -hmm. pass the paper to the next person. And each person has to write something good about that person. And so oh, I'll good. join in and I'll be one of the persons. And when I see some of the things that, and it's, it's really good because the kids, in the class develop a greater sense of validation and self-efficacy when they hear what their peers say about them. And then when their peers say the same exact thing, I don't wanna start crying. Um, like I can just see, you can see it in the posture of these kids. Like you can see like a kid yeah. who felt dejected, rejected, all of a sudden sit more upright. And mm -hmm. what it's amazing, some of the details and some of the intricacies of what kids see that we don't even see. Like we're just seeing it every day. That's a, you know, that's just a regular scenario or they'll forget about it in a week or whatever. But those things are really and truly seeds that impact them definitely. and how they treat others, you know, how they, how they feel about themselves and how they treat others. Yes, definitely. So apparently at Gil St. Bernard, you have a lot of seeds being planted into you on and off the court. Because I hear that your number one fan is actually there with you. Who's your number one fan? 
My number one fan is is my wife, <laughs> Pam, who uh, somehow is is give our. Give me a P. Give me an A. Team. Give me an M. Pam. <laughs> huh? So she's a big supporter. <laughs> she she's a big supporter and. She deals with the tough times, you know, if I come home after a, a tough loss and I really, you know, come in not in the greatest mood and she has to deal with that. So it's very difficult to be a coach's wife, but, but the support she gives is um, it's unbelievable. And, and it, it makes it a lot easier for me. And now, like I said, she's our scorekeeper. She's, she's at every game and I love the girls. She loves the team and it, it's really, it's a great thing. It's, it's, uh, it's definitely a family atmosphere, especially with one of my daughters is playing for our team as well. She's a junior. And so this is, basketball is a big part of our family. But, but and so what, is, what position does she play? My daughter, you know, unfortunately she got some of my jeans, the shorter <laughs> jeans, and uh, she's the point guard. Uh, and, you know. All right. She, yeah, and she can really shoot and she's a tough kid. Uh, she plays defense, uh, not like I didn't really play much defense, to be honest with you. And somehow she's a really good defender and she's she's really tough. She takes a lot of charges throughout the season and she can really shoot. And she uh, her basketball IQ is very good. Who's the person in the picture with the big bandage on their forehead? So that's my daughter. She got hurt taking a charge. <laughs> she got 16. She's got a big old bandage. Yeah, yeah, she got a big bandage, Holy so that gee. way she was able to play. They, she got hurt. They bandaged her up. We were able to get her back in the game, and then the next day she had to get 16 stitches, so she was out for two weeks. So now she has a big uh, bandaid on her forehead, so she's able to play. But she's wow. a tough kid. I can't hear you. Say it again. I, no, I, I lost you. I, when I saw that picture of the bandage on the forehead, I was like, what? And she was like, even though she had the bandage, she was like, yeah. I was yeah, like, yeah, oh she, my gosh, I like her. Yeah. I like her. <laughs> yeah, she's, she was ready. She's tough. That kid. is the team spirit. Yeah. That is awesome. <laughs> so, Mark, as yeah. you, as you are, um, you know, heading, you're number 13, you're heading to the next game. Am I correct? In the series? Well, we just played it and we lost in the finals to a team. Uh, uh, okay, Rutgers I'm Prep, sorry to hear that. that. Yeah, that's all right. We, um, they're nationally ranked. Wow. Top 20 in the country. We're 13th in the state. They were third in the state, but they're still ranked top 20 in the country. And they're, they're really good. And we, we didn't have one of our better games. Oh. But, you know, the one thing I can say about my team, we were kind of down by a lot at halftime. Second half. We competed. I made sure my kids played hard until the last, the sound of the buzzer. That That's one thing I could get, take away from that game is how hard we competed. We beat them in the third quarter. We beat them in the fourth quarter. Unfortunately, we were down a lot of points at halftime, but it says a lot about my team, how hard they played and we played to the end. So there was lessons learned in that game. We didn't, we did not quit and we continued to play it hard. No one yelled at each other. We stuck together as a team. So there, there's life lessons from that game. So I, I'm proud of my team. And Mark, did they have to be quiet on the bus ride home? They did not. But they were quiet because I think they were a little annoyed how, how the game went. So they weren't that loud. They were loud going to the game. But, um, but they were allowed to talk. I never once have said, you know, you can't talk on the bus. So if you ever wanted to come back and keep stats, it would be perfect for you. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Pam, you and I can talk on the bus. <laughs> you and I can talk. I love it. I love yeah, it. Pam likes to talk. Yeah, I, I, I used to do the yeah. shot clock. Yeah. <laughs> Masks are actually working well for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, look, they're not working well for me, Pam. You and I would still talk. Don't worry about it. <laughs> your daughter's injury have you ever faced an injury in sports yeah in basketball 
Yeah, the biggest injury, injury was going into my junior year right before we were starting the season. I got I had from uh, actually from lifting. I got a pinched nerve in my neck. It went down to my shoulder. I would have missed a couple weeks of the season. And um, for some reason, I decided not to play basketball that year. Even though junior I, year, you know, we I are high to, school or college. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, junior year in college. Junior year in college. And it was the worst decision I ever made not playing basketball that year. My, my father, who, who was my mentor, uh, begged me to play. And uh, I was just frustrated with the injury. And I just decided not to play my junior and senior year. And it, it was a, not a good decision I made. So that's anytime I do deal with some kids that they're thinking about not playing, maybe stopping playing high school. I always bring up that story and saying how it's, the biggest regret in my life is not finishing out my college basketball career. So I think that might have helped a couple of kids along the way where they think, you know, maybe they weren't, maybe they didn't stop because of injury. They were stopping because maybe confidence or something like that. I just told them that it, it would be something you might regret later on, finish it out, play the four years in high school, college, and, and you go from there. And that's, that's something that, you know, I learned from, you know, my own example. So I do try to tell that to anyone that thinks about stopping a sport or whatever they're, they're, they want to do, you know, finish it through. You know, if you, if you work hard, good things happen to you. Right, right. Consistency, commitment, tenacity. I was listening to a recent conversation of neuroscientists. You know, I'm working on this, uh, this NSF grant proposal. And yes. what they were saying is, one of the toughest things with recovery, and I'm talking about ACLs in particular. Yeah. One of the toughest things with recovery is not so much the physical mending of, you know, of the bone, of the injury, of the, of, of yeah. the fraction or whatever it may be. The toughest thing is fear of failure. Of is that so many athletes, because after the injury, one of two things happen a lot of times. One is that they're afraid to put pressure on it because they remember the pain of the injury. Or number two is that they work so hard and they overexert themselves until they're overexerting themselves in one area. So they've over strengthened. So they, you know, maximize strengthening one area. And then they have another area that's supportive that's actually weaker. And so what happens is they're prone to re-injury because they didn't, you know, they didn't take the proper time or the proper yep. totality, couldn't the proper totality of strengthening. So what happens is um, after injury, a lot of it is the like the neuroplasticity versus just the actual getting back on the court and playing again that keeps them from reaching yeah. some of their goals. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, uh, I think I lost you. Nope, you're here. Okay. Uh, their ACL injuries are very common in women's sports. So I've dealt with, you know, a bunch of girls throughout my career where they have been out and they persevered where they, you know, worked hard, they rehabbed and they were able to come back and play and be successful. But that that's a tough injury. ACL injury is definitely a difficult injury to overcome, but you know, you got to have that mindset where, Hey, I want to come back. I want to be better than I was before. And you know, it's not easy though, but it is very common in women's sports. More common in women's sports than men's sports? I, I, yes, definitely. For ACL, it is. Yeah, yeah. I heard it's like a nine month recovery uh, time yeah. expectancy. And then, um, yeah, I, it's, it's supposedly nine months to recover, but I think that it's like yeah. knee, spine, yeah. neck, and concussion are the most common injuries. Yeah, yeah. My daughter had a concussion as well uh, this season, so she was out for a couple weeks. How did, you, how did well. you know? Well, we had, how did you know she had a concussion? Her, what was that? Well, she was being watched. She was being watched. It was, it was, you know, at a game. She got an elbow in the head, and um, our trainer at her school is excellent, and you know, did tests right away, and you know, she had a slight concussion. And then we went to the doctor, of course. Mark, afterwards. when you look. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, so, you know, we went to the doctor right after and they, you know, 
they she had a slight concussion and we t did all the protocols and she was out for a couple weeks. So Mark, when you think about your daughter and her concussion, and you think about all the people that you've played with in the past, can you hear me? Yes, now I hear you. Okay, and you think about Actually, all the, when you think about your daughter and her concussion, and all the people that you played in the past, do you think that in high school yeah. or in college, there were probably some people that had concussions that were missed? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. I When I played, I know when I was younger, I landed on my head so hard and I remember it like it was yesterday and I was in a lot, I know, I I didn't want to. They took me out, and I went back in a few minutes later. I guarantee I had a concussion. I, I it was the hardest I've ever hit my head, and it it happened all the time with numerous players. There's no doubt there were a lot of a lot of people playing with concussions that you know were not aware of it at that time. Obviously now things are different, where uh, the standards are definitely different now. But yeah, back then it, it was it was pretty common. Well, I'm going to say something that's probably not good, but I have um, I have worked with students or talked to students. Remember, I teach Bible study, I teach school, yeah. and et cetera, et cetera. And I have heard students tell me that they had a concussion, but they had to get back in the game because of their parents' expectations and college, mm -hmm. you know, and scholarship yeah. opportunities. And, and, and so even though there is the acknowledgement that there may be something different, there is the fear of the repercussions if you if it's addressed yeah that's that's pretty scary i know with me that was it was my 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 parents uh would would definitely keep me out if they knew um i had a concussion but we do have you know unfortunately with these kids now there's a lot of pressure on them especially at the level where i'm coaching high school Woo! there's kids that you know are constantly being told that you know you need to get a scholarship and it's kind of sad it's 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 not a good i i've had players over the past years speak to me about it where they they feel a lot of pressure from their parents and it's really unfair to them and I try to do my best I can to you know keep them confident and not worry about that type of stuff everything will take care of its own uh just you know it when they go home after a game and they didn't play to maybe what their parents think their ability is and they got to hear it when they go home and that that's not good in youth sports and that's all over the place and it's very unfair to these student athletes i'm i'm really big on that where where i speak to the parents and let them know that uh that um you know these kids are great kids and you know you're putting a lot of pressure on them and it, and, it, and it's not fair it's hard to perform when there's that type of pressure on you when you get it from home you know, and, and, you know, safety first. And, and think about it. You're talking about professional. I lost you. Wait, I, I'm here. I'm here. Okay, but I didn't I was, hear what you said. I was going to say, you think about it. You're talking about pressure to perform on the court, right? Yeah. But that pressure to perform on court, all on the court also translates to pressure to perform in the classroom and classroom readiness. So as a teacher is teaching, this student can't focus or um, embrace the entirety of the lesson because they're focused on other pressures. Like, you know, when I leave this class, I got to do well on the court. I got to I got to get X number of minutes in. I got to make sure that, you know, I create this for the videos or whatever it is. So there's there's a whole lot of other things that come into it. It impacts social play, uh, relationships and expectations of others. So there's a lot of things that that type of pressure um, does for a student that we don't even see. Like we're only looking at the peripheral of it, but there's a lot more that's entailed. Yeah. So I wanted to ask Mark, uh, as, as, as we close up, I wanted to, you to, if at all possible, just talk a little bit about Hoop Heaven. Tell us a little bit about it and how, how it started, what you do there. Um, because it seems like a great training ground. I saw even, I read that it even coaches, you even coach rookies. So if you could tell me a little bit about the rookies that you're coaching. And once again, like I said, the whole program and 
how people can find out more about that because I know that there's a huge emphasis on cross training if individuals want to get to the next level. You got to have some type of cross training program. You can't just do it in, in do it on you know for the school program or whatever. Yeah, now that's true. so. Hoop Heaven is a, a great safe environment for kids to play in from ages. We have ages from five years old till you know we have adult leagues. But what we do is we have it's very structured. We have all different types of clinics for all, all different levels. So there there could be a clinic for a beginner. There could be advanced clinics. I do a lot of advanced. We call them elite workouts. So I get some high level, you know, middle school, high school kids. Uh, I do individual individual training for guys that play professionally overseas to Division One players. But we have everything there. We have AAU teams. They're like travel teams that you can try out for, all different levels. But you know, the main thing is to get the kids playing under a safe environment. We have very good coaches at my facility, and we just care about getting kids better. We don't want you know. There's no added pressure on them. We just want them to have fun and to improve their skill level. And we don't travel, you know, across the country. There's a lot of AAU teams that go all over the place. We keep them local. And the main focus is to keep getting them better. And by doing that, you have to do skill training and incorporate a team atmosphere, how to share the ball, how to, how to work with another teammate. That, that, that stuff is very important. It's not just not just individual things. You got to be able to work with. There's four other players on your team that are on the court with you, so you got to be able to understand how to play with you know your teammates and how to be a good teammate. You know when you're not in a game, do you, are you rooting for your team or are you just are you sitting there sulking because you're not in a game? Those are all all big things. Like you're part of a team, and how do you respond when you're not on the court? You know, and I'm big on that. I, uh, you know, my high school team, I make sure every kid is involved on the bench rooting for their teammate. You know, are you a good, are you a team player or are you just going to be mad because you're not in the game? That, that stuff's important. So we do incorporate that at Hoop Heaven to um, help kids as individually and as a team player. But uh, our facility is, uh, we call it the Mecca of basketball because it, it, it provides so many different things from one on one training to teams, to skill work, to, um, you know, open shoot, you know, free shooting and stuff like that. Just any way to improve their game uh, is good for us. We want kids to get better. We want them to have fun. It gives them an activity to do. There's so many things that basketball has done for me. It's brought me, you know, I've got so many friendships out of it. It's brought me, I've, I've met so many different types of people. It, it's not, it's a, it's a sport, but it, it you met me. Yeah, I met you, of course. And it, it's done so many things, you know, like it just, it's helped me. It helped me in the interview to get a job on uh, Wall Street, which I ended up turning down so I could be a high school coach. But things like that, wow. like, you know, like they, during my interview, I was at, at Merrill Lynch. They, we talked about basketball. Once he found out I played college basketball, we talked about basketball the whole interview. I got a job there. I ended up turning it down because I wanted to work for my father and to be able to coach a high school basketball team. So like this sport wow. has done so much for me. So, it, so it's really a family affair between you and your dad, you and your wife, yeah. you and your daughter. Yeah. That's awesome. And then, and then I can be like a sister because Pam and I are gonna talk on the bus. Yeah. Absolutely, we will. We will. That's so funny. Yeah. So I mean, like, I'm now in the family, Mark. Yeah, yes, you, you are. are. You always are. <laughs> always. <laughs> Mark, that. if there were any nugget that you would want to leave behind, God, you know what? I'm gonna like. I don't really use a word a lot, but now I'm starting to use that word nugget. A yeah. friend said nugget. He would always say nugget. So now I'm saying nugget. So if there were any, you know, type of, uh, of suggestion or advice you'd like to give to athletes, to people aspiring to go forward, I know you talked about your pinched nerve. I know you talked about moving forward. You talked about uh, playing in diverse environments. You talked about learning the fundamentals. You've talked about a great many things um, that they can take with them. Um, and also the importance of family and support and encouragement. 
um, being following your passion, you know, yeah. Merrill Lynch versus basketball coach, you know, following your passion. I mean, you've talked about a lot of different things. If there was one thing out there that um, you would say is your your passion, which will lead you to whatever the next goal is. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If there's one thing that you would like to bring to other people that you would like to have other people um, learn about the game or know about the game or know about moving forward, know about basketball, what is that uh, piece of advice or suggestion that you would like to, to leave behind? Well, my suggestion would be is, you know, if you have a dream, you got to go after it and you got to put in the work. It's work ethic is everything. Don't let anyone tell you different. If you have something that you really want to do, they might tell you, you know, me personally, all I ever heard, I was too short, you know, from playing in high school to playing college, whatever it be. That's all I heard, but I didn't, I didn't listen. Mark. Yes. Can you hear me? Mark. Yeah. I hear you. You said all I ever heard and then it stopped. Okay. Do you hear me now? Yes, I hear you. Okay. So my, my advice is if, you know, to go after what your goal is, whatever your dream is, whatever your passion is, don't let anyone discourage you or tell you differently. I was told, I was saying before, I was told I'm too short to play high school, too short to play high school varsity, too short to play in college. It didn't bother me. I just kept getting better. I kept working at it. You Sometimes you might have to work at it harder than anyone else because you might have to go, overcome obstacles. So just do what you want to do, like your passion. Don't let anyone tell you differently. But it, it comes with work ethic. Work ethic is everything. Whatever sport, whatever job, whatever interest you do, you got to work at it. You, you're not given something. You got to earn it. So I'm big on, you know, just saying, hey, you know, really put in the time and show your passion. Like, just don't let anyone tell you you can't do anything. Pam, I'm telling you, I used to love, I used to love to see Mark play because when he was in the game, he really and truly gave it 150%. Like, if I could tell you that there was somebody who was assessing the other players, you know, understanding court, understanding, I mean, what's going on on the court? That's what I mean, understanding the court, understanding the bench. I mean, just really knowing the game inside and out. It was your husband. And so I was always a big fan of his. I mean, I'm a big fan of all the players on the team. Yeah. But I just remember the passion that Mark always had for the game. And so I am one of your Thank fans. You. I am. I am. I'm, I'm, I'm I your sister it. and your fan. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I, I really so, appreciate um, this. You know, that is. And I appreciate you, Mark. This is, I, I really appreciate you, Kelly. And this interview is great. I, I appreciate everything you do. I do follow you. What you know, everything that you're doing for so many different things. Uh, it's really it's nice to see a fellow classmate uh, really succeed in um, helping others. That's the main thing. That's that's I'm big on that, and so are you. Like reaching out and helping others. That's what it's all about. Giving back, right? That's that's exactly what it is about. Because you know what? If we don't lift one another up and support one another, then guess what happens? other people around see it because you're a role model for somebody no yeah. matter what you do somebody's watching yeah. Yeah. and so the more you can yeah. collaborate and work together with like-minded people one of the things that i learned mark though and i will tell you this is that um my mom i don't know did my mom teach you in eighth grade uh, yeah i i remember your mom i lost you okay i don't know if my mom taught, i don't know if my mom taught you in eighth grade but my mom taught us specifically but and so a lot of people know my mom yeah. Okay. So my mom was one of those people who was very, very big on collaborating and working with people. But what I did not learn until later on is that the people that she worked with had similar goals, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. sometimes what happens is we bring people in that have different goals, and then you wind up going left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. So yes, it is a matter of collaborating and working together, but it works best when you have people with similar goals, similar interests. Yes, of course. You know, yeah. moving forward in right, moving forward in similar directions. I saw that you were with Kevin Schmidt. Did Kevin Schmidt go to um, mm -hmm. Percipity High or Central? He, he went to Central, but then he went to Morris Catholic High School. But he's back. But he, I remember he, Kevin Schmidt. 
He's now the athletic director at Central Middle School. But was he a comedian? No. He is a comedian, but okay, he's so not a comedian. He's funny, but he doesn't do it professionally. No, 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 no. No, I mean, the Kevin Schmidt that I'm talking about, I just remember he used to like always like uh, say funny things or side marks or something like that. Like he was comical. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Okay, I think I remember. I think I definitely remember Kevin Schmidt because when I saw it, when I read about you and Kevin working together yeah. in Mendham, I was like, wait a minute. I think yeah. I remember Kevin. I think I remember him being comical. Yeah, you de yeah, you definitely remember him. But he, he, at high school, he went to Mars Catholic. And he's very funny. But we're still wow. yeah, very good friends to this day. And all the guys that okay. I played basketball with yeah. at Mars we're still best friends to this day. Oh. Do you remember Jump Up Jared? Jared, yes, of course. Okay. Was a, so I told I told Jared, I said, Jared, I want to interview you. You know? Oh, that's great. I told I, I said, Jared, I want your autograph. So uh yeah. we're gonna see. So so maybe this will put a little pressure on Jump Up Jared uh yeah, to yeah, give us yeah, the Ivy League. Yeah, Ivy League player, yes. Yeah, give us the Ivy League perspective on um on sports, you know, on, 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 um, student athletes. Me and him, so, had a, uh, we were well, best Mark, friends and we had a great connection on the court. Me, me and Jared. Really? So we, were, we were best friends. And he's I, like, he's one of my other favorite people. Yeah. Yeah. Jared's a great guy. Yeah. Yeah. I used to visit him in California. Well, you know, did you know Jared's dad went to Carolina? Yes. Mm -hmm. And Jared's dad, he was a big fan of mine. Like he was, he's a good guy. We went on a boat with him. Yeah, yeah, but that. Did that's you so pay? Fun. Yeah, we oh, went out. Sorry, yes. We, we went on a boat with with Mr. Cass. Yes. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. yeah. I think you're, I think I met him. Friend. I can't remember because um, I think I met him, but I can't remember because Jared would when he decided to go to Princeton, I was trying to get him to go to Carolina because I didn't want to go to Carolina by myself. <laughs> so they were telling me, um, they said, well, when you get to Carolina, John Sanzone will be there. And I said, well, I don't know John Sanzone. I know, I know Jared Katz. I want Jared Katz to go. So, but anyway, That's so funny. listen, Mark, thank you so much for everything. Thank you for all the insight that you provided. The only thing that last thing I'm going to ask you is, can you please provide the contact information for um, Hoops Heaven? So, Just in yeah. case if some of our listeners would like to find out about, uh, find out more about the program and the cross training opportunities. Yeah, definitely. So uh, the email address at hoop heaven is hhbridgewater at optonline.net. hhbridgewater at optonline.net. Uh, can I give the phone number for hoop heaven? Please do everything, anything and everything, okay. the website, everything. Uh, the phone number is 732. 2714667 and our website which has all the information on it is hoopheaven.com so it's hoopheaven.com and you know like i said we kids have a lot of fun there and we're just trying to get kids better that's the main goal but thank you kelly it was great wow. always great seeing you and i appreciate everything you do you please stay in touch i will i will thank you pam Thank you, Kelly. It was so yeah, you nice guys, seeing you. You guys got to meet one day. We're gonna. Uh, we're coming down there. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Well, yeah, and we'll. Hey, look, we'll meet at the family reunion if nothing else, right? There yeah. you go. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> After <All right>. COVID, <laughs> Mark. Right. Yes, please, Mark. Thanks so much. I will. Uh, I will uh, definitely be in touch with you. Okay, All right, thanks, Kelly. Yep. Take care. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. Take care. Bye-bye.